Good evening, folks. We're back here with Week 6 football, the third home game of the season with the Marion Harding High School practices. They're coming off a tough loss last week against the Pleasant Spartans. Coach, can you talk a little bit about what you saw last week out of the practices? Yeah, uh, you know, we talk about playing a clean game. It was just a, uh, a penalty-ridden game. It looked like a game that Harding had control of through the first half, and uh, Pleasant hit him, I think, three times in four minutes there to start the yeah, third. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just tough sledding last week. That's yeah, I mean, it was, it, like 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 Coach Kevlinger said, it was very much tough sledding last week. The Prexies had a situation where they are down on the one-yard line, had a penalty, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things where the Prexies have won a lot of tough, gritty games, but unfortunately last week their luck ran out. That being said, going into this week, the Prexies are still in great shape. They're sitting at 3-2 and two after five games, they are. but they are playing themselves a Galleon football team that has been pretty tough this year. Yeah, uh, they're a 4-1 team. You know, they've got some athletes on offense um, averaging through the first half of the season 32 points a game. 32 so, points a game. Yeah, that's, that's pretty a, impressive. That's a pretty impressive. Pretty so, impressive. You know, if you're Galleon there, anytime you're scoring that amount of points in a game, you're giving yourself an opportunity. So, uh, you know, I look for the Harding defensive line to be stout as Absolutely. they've been all season. Yeah. Yeah. and uh, maybe thwart that uh, Tiger offense a little bit. So. Absolutely, and, and, you know, based upon what Coach Kepling is saying here, the fact that Galleon has had 32 points a game, and also when you factor in the fact that the Prexies defense hasn't really given up that many points per game. I mean, the Prexies defense on average has given up maybe 20 points a game, roughly. I don't, I don't know the statistics, but I know I think maybe – the Newark game was maybe when the most got scored on us, and that game went to overtime. Right, right. So, so I think 27 points yeah. with an extra frame. Yeah, there, so, yeah, yeah. So with an extra frame in there. So really the Prexies are giving up on average about 20, 21 points a game. So it'll be interesting to see what the what the Prexies defense can do versus the Galleon offense. Now, with that being said, our offense, we're still kind of looking for that identity, and I think we found a little bit running the ball, just doing a little bit of smash mouth football. Can you talk about that a little bit? What, what you've seen so far since we've kind of switched to that a little bit, Coach? Yeah, I think it was something we noticed maybe the first time week two or three, This uh, the power eye as um, we put Colin Hill, Quave Booker in the in the backfield. And that's just, you know. It's a lot of say, bodies. Every, as we say every week, that's a lot of mass to that's put in the backfield. That's a lot of mass yeah, to put no, in the backfield. No doubt. So Absolutely. Well, and, you know, we've seen a little bit of a rotation between uh, Mitch Myers and Noah Thompson. Uh, didn't really see that much last week, but it's interesting to see um, if the Prexies go back to a little bit more vanilla offense, try to establish a run, because you know as well as I do, the establish a run that opens up so much. But uh, we're going to have a good night of Friday Night Football here, folks. we got the 3-2 and two Prexies against the 4-1 and Galleon Tigers, and uh, there's still a lot on the line in the MOAC. Still a lot on the line. The Prexies are still very much in the driver's seat to win this conference if they went out. And looking at their schedule, they've got a lot of winnable games, Coach. They really do. Yeah, no doubt, a lot of winnable games. You know, you're talking about a team that's uh, sitting 12th just on the outside looking in on that uh, playoff picture, too. Let's not put the cart before the horse. Not put but, the cart before the but, horse, but – you're in striking distance, so well, definitely and, a, lot, a ton to play for here. And, you so. know, I was talking to some football players today, and I told them, I was like, guys, listen, we're a good football team. We're just about five or six mistakes away from being 5-0. and And really, if the Prexies can erase the mistakes, Coach Kaplinger, there's no reason why they can't go out on any Friday night and beat anybody. But, like you said, you got to play a clean game. No doubt. And if no the Prexies play a clean game tonight, there's no doubt in my mind that they can win this ball game. So with that being said, folks, we'll be back after this short message with the Prexies versus the Galleon Tigers. Game six, Friday night football. Go Prexies. Go Prexies.
All right, folks, we are live. And starting off here, I just want to mention that the OK Cafe is now a sponsor of the Marion Harding Prexis Friday Night Football. Coach, you ever had the OK Pizza? I have. But I'll tell you what, though. I'm, I'm a big fan of their calzones. If Holy you've ever had those, cannolis. That, oh, that's life-changing right I'm there. I'm telling you, that's, that's, it's your life before and your life after you have those calzones. Uh, fair so, enough, fair enough. That being said, it's good to see, I believe, is that Savion Green Shoes Tyler? Is he back? He's cleared, Coach. He is cleared. We got a uh, one-week hiatus there where uh, Andrew Newsom, another one of our soccer players, Newman, if we're on the, uh, in the uh, you know, the nickname business. Absolutely. Um, he came in and filled in and, uh, you know, answered the call admirably last week. But, yeah, Sav's back in action. Kicked two PATs, didn't he? Sure did. Oh, man, listen. You can't go wrong with that. Andrew Newsom's a fine young man, and uh, got to give him a little shout-out tonight because he did kick some PATs last week. That being said, Gallion comes out. The Prexies are on defense. Uh, who we got a quarterback there, Coach, for the Tigers of Gallion, sir? Yeah, that looks like uh, number 11, Harrison Ivey, I believe. Uh, Harrison Ivey. A converted wide receiver, so or wide receiver converted to quarterback, rather. So, you know, uh, athletic kid, they got some wheels on him. So anytime, you know, you, you put an athlete back there, you're going to give yourself uh, – Give yourself some some leeway, if you will. So. Absolutely. Well, if there's one thing athletes can do, they can make things happen. It should be mentioned too that I believe the uh, theme for the student section tonight's American America or something. Yeah, a lot of American sure flags is. painted USA. faces. Patriots. Okay, there we go. Patriots. Little handoff. Number seven for the Galleon Tigers. It looks like uh, Tanner Chrisman on the carry there. Chrisman look squirts ahead for what looks like about a five-yard gain. Third and five. What you don't want to see there, Colin Hill kind of stumbling off the field there. Two plays in. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a good sign. Maybe a little cramp, a little gimpy there. Hopefully something he can work out throughout the course of the game. A little pass to the flats there. Ivy's pass, complete. It looks like Galleon's not wasting any time. They're doing a little hurry offense, lining up right away, coach. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we had seen in years past with this Harding-Galleon matchup, uh, there's been a little bit, you know, Harding's had a few more athletes on the field, it's always seemed, and uh, one of those popular tactics is uh, to go to go pace there, you know, to go hurry up there and uh, try to equalize that a little bit, no, try to wear down that stout uh, Harding defensive front. Absolutely, Coach, you bring up a good point. I mean, if anybody uh, ever watched the Oregon Ducks when they were in their prime, that's kind of what they did because they really didn't have the size to go up against a lot of the big boys, but they would come with that with that tempo and just catch people on their heels. Looks like on that last play, let, ran a little counter doubles there. as two uh, backside guard and tackle pulled. Balls on the ground. Balls on the ground. And what is a bad snap? Okay, coach, so here we go. We talked about how important the first down play is. Got about three yards on first down, but the second down play was no go because of a fumble. So now they're looking at third and long. I'm thinking maybe we're going to see a little bit of the same, a little bit of a roll out there, maybe a pass to the flats. Uh, be interesting to see how the Prexies defend this. No doubt. I think uh, Ivy there definitely proved, proved mobile on that first set of downs. So Ivy drops stays back. In the stays in the pocket. Rolls out. Throws a duck. That's an intercept. Noah Thompson, cornbread. Cornbread. I'm going to tell you what. Justin Bentley on a great, great peelback block in which he loses his helmet, Coach. That was a uh, that was a thing of beauty. Yeah, it sure was. It looked like he took a little exception there, but uh, got to strap the lid on. Well, you know the great thing about that play, that block that Bentley just did there on the great interception by Noah is it was clean and no flags were called. A lot of times on those peelback blocks, they're calling flags on those now because it's important that we keep kids safe, but at the same time, too, Whenever a kid gets a hit like that, you got to celebrate it, Dick. Have keep it. your head on the swivel there. Head on the swivel, absolutely. Corn a little toss out. to, I believe that is Freight Train, who is the freight train. hits and skips ahead for, 
I believe about a seven yard, eight yard gain. And I believe coming into the game at running back is, I want to say, number two, Julian Ladd, a young man who's getting his first PT tonight. We'll talk about him a little bit more here in a second. Goes right. Julian Ladd with a first down on his first carry of the season. Julian Ladd is a young man who joined us um, late last year, uh, came to Marion Harding High School, and because of transfer rules, he had to sit out the first five games. So that's that's Julian's first carry. Uh, been excited to see this kid all year. He's a, he's, a, he's a great kid, great manners. We're happy to have him at Marion Harding High School. It's glad, good to see on his first run. Coach, he picks up a first down. Yeah, it was a hard run there. So Absolutely. It was a great run by that young man. A little swing pass to Freight Train. Makes a man miss. Almost made two miss there. Well, you know, and the thing about Freight Train is uh, he ain't very big, Coach. But the kid's got wheels. No doubt, no doubt. I'm telling you, I don't even know if Freight Train's even a good nickname for him. We just call him Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels. I think we're too committed at this yeah, point. Yeah, we are too committed with Freight Train. I mean, we got to stick with that, Coach Kep. We, we, we certainly have to, sir. I mean, you grew up on the west side. You know you know enough. You've seen fast trains on Bellfound Avenue and slow trains. And Absolutely. Trains, so. And he's a fast train. <laughs> there he you go. Train. And big trains and little trains, Coach. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, there was a whiff block there. When you get that much penetration, there was a whiff block there. It looked like there was a guard that pulled out. We are going to run the good old classic Marion Harding G play, and somebody missed a block or the Tigers knew it was coming and just blitzed like kingdom come. So now the all-important first down play uh, goes for a loss of three, which makes it a little bit tougher sledding here for the Prexies to get that all-elusive first down. Julian Ladd back at tailback yet again. Colin Hill with a great block. However, the Galleon Tigers swarm young Mr. Ladd. Nothing doing on that one. No amount of good running could have uh, gotten anything out of that play there, Coach. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm reading my, my stat sheet here, and uh, one of those Galleon defensive linemen, number 76, Gabe Phillips, is listed at 6'8", 307. Is that big number 78? That might be it. That's a big boy, Coach. Uh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Holy smokes. So. I see a kid out there with white shoes too, Coach. You know, we always said in wrestling, kid with white, white shoes, shoes are tough. We always said if they have, in wrestling, we would always joke if they had white shoes and tattoos, they were a good wrestler, right? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, that was a good pass to Booker. I mean, the Prexies picked up about seven yards on that. However... When it's third and 13, you need more than seven yards. Sure, sure. Calling the Hammer Hill back to punt. Glad to see him uh, finish that defensive series and come back onto the field there after limping off second play of the game. Oh. And you know, that was a great punt by Colin, but the Prexy just couldn't get down there fast enough to uh, kill the ball. And the, uh, Tigers of Galleon get the ball at the 20-yard line. And once again, Coach, we got to mention OK Cafe Pizza. Wow. And nachos. And nachos. I'm going to pick something new every I'm time we go. Let's talk about OK oh, Pizza, Coach. Man. After the game, I might get myself one. Or maybe one of those calzones. That's just nostalgia right there. Remember the old man uh, getting home and ordering nachos? And oh, there you go, Coach. Ooh. Well, you know, the OK Cafe is one of those businesses that's so ingrained in the fabric of Mary in Ohio. Nothing doing for Ivy on that one. Looks like he's taken down by, I want to say, Drake the Snake. Nope, check that. That's not Drake the Snake Fashion. That's Kirkland the Hawk Hawkins. I think uh, we'll go ahead with our first punt of the day and say Ivy was wrapped up nicely. There, Ivy so. was yeah, wrapped up nicely. How about that? There's no poison in that, Ivy. No doubt, no doubt. Oh, wow, that was an even. Wow. M Mr. Mullins is looking at me like that's the worst pun I've ever heard. Wow. Yeah, that was terrible. Wow. Sorry, wow. folks. Sorry, folks. I apologize. No, that's our fault. That's what we get when we play a road game. We that's get all that build get. up. Oh, that Little miscommunication there. Looks like uh, <laughs> Ivy wanted to go, uh, wanted the receiver to go long. Uh, Isaiah Alsip, the wide receiver. 
came back in. Well, and you know, I really think that Ivy kind of made a smart decision on that because I think Ivy looked and he saw everybody covered. So, because really what you had here there was some underneath intermediate routes. There's really no deep route. And maybe there was supposed to be. I don't know. But it looked like Ivy just kind of didn't like what he saw there, Coach. And he said a smart thing and just threw it where no one could catch throw it. Throw it where no one play another day, as they say in the water boy. Live there you play go. Play another day, right? Third and long here for Gallion. Ivy rolls out. Rolls right. Got number 15 in the flats. That's Gavin Pennington. Threw it, just threw it behind him there. You know, uh, a lot of times you see you get the benefit of a mobile quarterback, but, you know, uh, the accuracy will suffer. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, people don't realize, A, it's hard to throw a football. B, it's hard to throw a football on the run, which is why when you watch a guy in the NFL like Russell Wilson, the fact that that guy can run and throw the ball like he does, or even, or even you know, a guy like JT Barrett gets a lot of flack sometimes for the Buckeyes, but there's a lot of running and throwing there. That's not easy to do. Low punt here. Oh, and that was a dangerous Dangerous, dangerous catch by Seth Laham Tyler. Holy smoke, Seth Laham, you almost gave me a heart attack. But yeah. I guess he kind of looked up and he goes, oh, there's the ball, better grab it. Well, you know, and, uh, I guess if uh, you got a little bit of space and you can do it on your terms, that's better than we've talked week in and week out about that football doing crazy things. And the last thing you wanted to do is bounce off your leg and start rolling the other way. You so. ain't lying, Coach Kepler. I think it was Fred Taylor that uh, Legendary basketball coach with Buckeyes, so let's go to the Avalon ball and talk about how he can bounce weird places. <laughs> Julian Ladd again deep for the Prexies. Julian Ladd bounces it out. Well, and here's the thing. Julian Ladd is a kid who obviously has a lot of great speed, but he doesn't have a lot of live game reps. So on that play right there, you see Julian Ladd doing a lot of what a lot of what young running backs want to do is they want to bounce it. They want to bounce it. And it's one of those things that once Julian gets a film study, he's actually seen a little bit of things they happen. He would have saw there that there was, a, there was a huge hole right there they could have ran through. But nonetheless, he's a great kid. He's out there working hard. And with him, it's just, it's just about getting game reps. And I know he's excited to be in the game, Coach. I talked to him today. And I tell you what, if you'd have hooked a uh, power station up to his grin, you could have you could have powered a third world country. He was so excited. That's a good lead block from Hill there. They do, uh, you know, play into the strength there, get the ball out on a pitch. Guy wants to go outside. And the ball. So speaking of excited, Julian gets a first down. Listen, this kid's had four runs this game, and uh, three of them have been for very positive yards. No doubt, no doubt. Listen, and we've talked a lot about Noah Thompson's hair. Can we talk about how great Julian's hair is? Uh, that's see, a great perm, see, Coach. I, I don't even know. I, you think that's a perm or is that real? I, I, I haven't asked. I draw the line at players with better hair than me. So yeah, we'll talk well, about cornbread. Coach, everybody I, has better hair than me. <laughs> no, yeah. You're not wrong. I have no hair. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, yep. So, no, that that is that is a fantastic mop. So it is, no doubt, no doubt. I, I honestly think if we're giving out awards for best hair on the football team, we might have to flip a coin between him and Cornbread. Speaking of that, Julian's in the game, coach. We gotta we gotta give him a uh, we gotta give him a nickname here. We gotta think of something. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we do. do. We can obviously, you know, something. I got it. I got it. Okay. He's gonna be Lad the Impaler. <laughs> Here it is. That's fantastic. Lad the Impaler, the ball carrier. There he goes. Carries and for those two. Of you guys who don't know your history, uh, the actually, uh, we're going to give you a little history lesson here. The uh, historical Dracula was named Vlad. Vlad Dracul, and they called him Vlad the Impaler. So, Lad the Impaler. I like that. That's that's fantastic, coach. Listen, that, I bet that makes up for our bad pun that earlier. That makes up for our bad puns. And I bet people watching this didn't know they were going to get a history lesson. But we are both history teachers. I'm principal now, but before I did coach, I was a history teacher, and you yourself are still a history teacher. Yes, sir. So there we are. Colin Hill rumbles ahead for... Fullback keep there. If it's not a first down, coach, it's pretty dead gum close. No doubt. That's going to be about fourth and one here. Personnel suggests that Harding's going to go for this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen. I think Savi's got a live enough leg to do this, but based upon what Galleon's offense has done, you take a shot here. You, you, you try to get the first down, and really, quite frankly, Colin Hill running the ball at fullback, or even Noah going under center for a little goose and go. I, you know, I'm smart with what I, I'm fine with whatever here. Thompson goes to Hill, and I believe, Coach, that's enough. I think the Hammer Hill got it. 
Yep, it's uh, two vastly different reactions on both sidelines. Well, you know, everybody's pointing one way or the other. Wait a minute. Spot's looking Spot like it's going to go Galleon's way. Looking like it's in Galleon's favor. You know, Coach, based upon the way the defense was lined up there, I think a little bit of a goose and go might have worked because I don't. from my angle up here, it didn't look like there was anybody directly over the center. And uh, I think Noah could easily got that. But at the same time, too, listen, if I'm, if I'm Coach Wesser, I'm going to give it to Colin Hill in that situation, too. That's just what you do. Absolutely. And really, I mean, I, they're up here. I'm up here. They're down there. I didn't think that was a good spot. But nonetheless, here we are. So, Ivy Ivy on the it. keep. Got a convoy. Still He's nothing going. From behind by <laughs> Seth Laham. Tyler, take him to the Holy Land. Coach Seth Laham. Bethlehem's not really the Holy Land, but nonetheless, it's Bethlehem time. Yeah, it's, it's cool. <laughs> so nothing going on that first down play for Galleon. That's going to make it second and 10 from their own 14. Ivy's got two wide right. Rolls right. Mitch Myers on the... Defense out there, and coach, we talked a lot about Mitch Myers getting in some at uh, getting some in at quarterback, but we have been remiss to mention this young man is also now getting a lot of playing time, and I believe looks like outside linebacker on defense. Sure is, and you know uh, he's had his name called two or three times on coverage, doing a great job. Absolutely, yeah. Well, and you know you just look at Mitch. I mean, Mitch just looks like a football player. There's some people that like I never looked like a football player, but I was. But Mitch just looks like a football player. So here we go. The Galleon Tigers, third and ten here. Uh, pretty sure we're probably going to see some pass in here. D-line. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. All right, folks, listen. What During this timeout, we're going to take a quick commercial break with the Marin Harding High School Telecom production. Postable bag, like me, or a large paper bag, or a hauler-provided cart. Plastic bags like you are now banned from curbside pickup. This is the other new bag in the neighborhood. Hi guys, what's shaking? Hey there, welcome. You know, I love the club. It's, it, it, it's, it's the reason I'm here. It's, it's taught me so many lessons and I can talk about it in a positive way, in an honest way for the rest of my life. You know, in a community or in a town, your role models are the people that you deal with, that, that, that are in your face, that you talk to, that you can ask questions to, not necessarily some basketball. All right, folks, we are back, and we would like to thank uh, the uh, Academy Award winning actor Denzel Washington for that last commercial. Boys and Girls Club, I mean, we're so big time here, we get Denzel Washington to do our commercials. How about it's, that? How about, how uh, about yeah. that? It was, it was nice to meet him, it really was. Hey, Denzel's a great guy. Ivy rolls again. And Ivy is right now. Coach, I'm trying to come up with a pun there, but I'm coming up short. Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Ivy just didn't throw a good pass. How about that? Ivy was in the weeds with that throw. Wow. wow. Listen, I can't, I can't take, I can't take that's that. That's all John Mullins. That's all John yeah. Mullins. Telecom I mean, teacher here at Harding. I mean, telecom teacher. I mean, we're, we're, we are playing. We are playing checkers, and Mr. Mullins is over here playing chess. Playing Let me chess. tell you what. He's playing chess. Low snap. Low that snap. punk goes straight that up. Punk. Get away, Prexies. Get away, Prexies. Ian, positive field position for the presidents here well, on the right side of the 50. Absolutely, and, and we have started off in positive field position. So here we go. We've had three offensive series. Let's see if, actually, this will be the third one. Let's see if we can shake off the rust, punch it in, and get ourselves a TD. Coach Brady down there giving young Mitchell Frederick Myers some uh, some updates. Or not I gotta, some updates, a little bit of coaching down there. I got to give uh, props to, to a couple guys here. My my second period psych class, we got two offensive linemen on there say, uh -oh, saying coach. this morning, Coach Kep, you got to give some clout to this offensive line. So, uh take this minute to uh, give my shout out to Kyle Gumby Taft, 
and Elijah Potros Collier there. So. Elijah Potros Collier? That's right. I like that, That's coach. Right. Yeah, that was uh, yeah. Kyle Gumby Tap. Yeah, why not? We've got Zach the Killer Keller, and then we've also got at center Hayden Silky Hamilton. There we go. And speaking of Silky Smooth moves, did you see what Freight Train did there? He stopped I did. the first field, I ran did. back the other way for a first down, coach. Little, little toss to Julian Ladd. And there's a hole there. Uh, there's some, that there's was some laundry. As clear as day. Coach, I do believe too, Drake the Snake Fashion is the tight end out there as well. Yep, you uh, had a real nice write up of the Marion Star this week. I don't uh, know if listen, you happened to read that. This kid is got a YouTube channel that has 70,000 people following it, and there's ad space that's sold on this YouTube channel that he gets paid for. How about that? How about that? How about that? I mean, he's just an example of, of the great kids we have Holy at Marion Harding High School. The and a second year telecom. And a second year telecom. Yeah, and yeah. you know, and think about the great programs we have with our logistics class, telecom. We have all these great things going on, and there's so many neat kids doing so many neat things that people don't realize. And you know, folks, if you ever want to see what's positive in your community, all you got to do is look at your schools. You know, it's not always about the athletics. It's not always about those things. It's about what great kids are doing every single day. Kids are going to go out and do great things and represent Marion, Ohio throughout the rest of their lives because they're just great kids doing great things, and Drake is one of those kids. Play action here. Oh, wow. What a catch! Woo! Moni got up there, I'll tell you what. There he goes up catching the ball, singing Moni, Moni. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Moni, Moni. Well, I'll wow. tell you what. I can't believe we got Billy Idol. Woo! We did get some Billy Idol. How about Idol. that? I'll tell you what, Noah put a ton of air under that. Yeah, that ball set up sure there. did. It like sure it did. Ever. Julian Ladd in the backfield. Colin Hill also at fullback. Julian Ladd breaks free. You know, Coach, we've tried a lot of different guys at tailback. We've seen Quave Booker do some fantastic, amazing, awesome things at tailback. We've seen Freight Train. We've seen Gary Money. We've seen a lot of people do different things. But with what I've seen so far tonight, it may seem like Lodi and Paler is the answer to what we need at tailback, Coach. Yeah, sure looking that way. Obviously, sure looking uh, that way. Coaching staff trusting him, keeping him in through, you know, these first two or three offensive series there. He's got a lion's share of the ball. So. Well, and you know, that right there, Julian didn't try to do too much there. He saw the hole that was there, and he took it, and he only got a yard there. But if you watch what he did, he didn't try to bounce. He didn't try to do anything. He just went straight ahead. And, you know, there's running backs who can go left and right and make things happen, and there's running backs who also run north and south. And from what I've seen so far, Julian looks like one of those kids who can do a little bit of both. No doubt, no doubt. Been uh, multifaceted here so far this evening. I think we forgot to mention on the offensive line, we also got Isaiah the Russell, or Isaiah the Muscle Russell. There we go. There you go. No Thompson with a fake pitch. Fakes the pitch. Has a Good block. block. Absolutely. Great block. How Good about money, that? Money. And Cornbread puts a little gravy on it. Scores a touchdown. There we go, Praxis. Choose Tyler in after a hiatus last week. Snap is true, the kick is up. And good and green shoes. Tyler puts it to the uprise. And just like that, Coach Kevin will be up seven to nothing. We will be back after a short commercial break with the Mary Hardy High School Telecom production. She taught me to have a plan and make sure I do all my work before I play. I also learned how to play well with others. I try to remember that everyone can win. And I listen before I talk. That makes working together a lot more fun. 
I know that balance feels best, so I remember to take care of myself. Miss C taught me lots of things, but the best one ever is that I can be great. What if every child had the same opportunity? The opportunity to develop the essential life skills and characteristics students need to thrive in the 21st century. The Leader in Me process. All right, folks, we are back. And that commercial you saw there was Leader in Me. That's one of the great pillars of the Marion City Schools. Talk about the four pillars. And Leader in Me is one of those things where we teach our kids to be the leaders of tomorrow and teach them all of the great you know, uh, ethical lessons in life that just makes it be great people. Coach, you ever, you ever, uh, you ever looked into or read any of the uh, the leader in me and the seven habits of highly successful people? Yeah, I, uh, we actually read the uh, the seven habits of uh, highly successful teens when I was in high school myself. So uh, I believe it was the the Covey Institute, but it was the uh, the son who who wrote that. Version oh, and, uh, uh, yeah, the, the Covey family, right? right. Yep, yep. Well, and it sounds to me, Coach, like you put first things first. Hey, I, I do what I can. this. Wow. It is amazing that all that running around, there is not one holding call or one block in the back. As young Cody Harris gets up and throws up his hands like, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong, which he did not because no flags are called. That's a great hustle by young Cody Harris, number 10 for the Prexies. Prexies defense back out there. We got Justin Bentley. And uh, coach, is that, who is that next one? Number 60 or 52, coach. My, doth my eyes deceive me. That is CJ McKinney. I was telling his parents uh, a couple weeks ago. McKinney. We had to get him a nickname. We too, do so. have to get CJ. I think he's going to be the motor. CJ, he, yes. CJ the motor. That kid's McKinney. got a motor. Yeah, CJ the motor. That's, McKinney. There that's you go. it. Mr. and Mrs. McKinney, the motor is your son now. Speaking of, oh, that's a good north south run there by Christman. Christman. Set the ham. Set the ham. Tyler with the tackle there. Gallion staring at second and about a hair. Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, check that, folks. To let the quarter run out. So. Quarter's out. On that note, on that note, folks, we're gonna take a quick commercial break with a Mary Harding High School Telecom production. Music department with nationally recognized marching band, show choir, orchestra, jazz band multiple choirs and ensembles, as well as advanced placement music theory, the Marion City Schools offer a wide variety of opportunities for students to showcase their musical talents. Numerous studies show that music education enhances core curriculum, promotes social dynamics, and encourages community involvement. At Marion City Schools, opportunity is the foundation of success. Wouldn't it be great if money grew on trees? Unfortunately, it doesn't. But at Harding High School, our guidance counselors are here to help students find the money needed for college. In fact, our students typically qualify for merit-based scholarships, athletic awards, or even general awards based on financial need. No, money doesn't grow on trees, but at Marion City Schools, we can help you plant the seeds of success by guiding you towards a wealth of scholarship money. At Marion City Schools, your future begins today. And we're back here with the Mary Harding High School Telecom production in the second quarter with the Prexies of Marion Harding leading the Tigers of Galleon 7 0. Oh, never mind. We don't have the chains set yet. Speaking of Whoops. chains, over there on the chains, I believe we've got Jeff the Hammer Hill, the father of Colin Hill. And uh, I do believe that's Andy Van Sickle and maybe Bobby Knoll. I don't know. We're still having some chain issues. If you can pick out those faces from this far away, you're not allowed to miss a number ever again. Well, and listen, <laughs> listen, I love Andy Van Sickle, and he's a great numbers guy. I mean, he went to college to be an accountant, and I know he's an accountant, and he can't figure out the chains. Oh, shoot. Man. Well, he was a Baker Bulldog coach. Well, you were one of those two, weren't you? Too, yeah. well, well, I was an Edison Charger coach. All right, so second and about a hair. And they choose to pass on second and a hair. Long ball. Long ball. And Man. 
just like that. Well, listen, he put that on a bead because Detweiler didn't have bad coverage on that. That was just a great throw, Coach. Oh, sure was. You know, uh, we talked pregame about this Galleon offense being one that's over 30 points a game. Uh, you know, we saw Ivy struggle through those first couple series. You know, athletes are going to make plays. Athletes are going to make plays. Well, and really what the Galleon coaches did there is they exploited a mismatch because Detweiler's an outside linebacker. And in most cases, your outside linebackers really aren't going to be in a great position to run vertical with a wide receiver like that. And, you know, they just exploited a mismatch. That was a good call by Galleon. And believe it or not, that was good coverage by Detweiler. That was just a fantastic over-the-shoulder throw. I mean, that's a Tom Brady type throw right there, Coach. Sure. Well, and really, I'm a Dolphins fan. We shouldn't bring up Tom Brady in a, well, in a broadcast. Listen, I don't like Tom Brady as, as much. Listen, I think the only people that like Tom Brady are two people. Michigan Wolverine fans, and I can do without them. And New England Patriots, New England Patriots fans, and I can do without them. I'll tell you what, though. Nothing against my brothers in Boston, but I can do without the New England Patriots. Oh, uh, yeah. You yeah, know. I'll tell you what, though. Even, even, uh, person like myself who would consider um, myself drinking the haterade in all Tom Brady respects. Uh, after that comeback in the Super Bowl last year, though, I'm like, yeah, I think, uh, I think he's probably one of the greatest, to, if not the he greatest, is. to ever play but my question the quarterback is this. position. Was it really the Patriots' comeback or was it the Falcons' collapse? I yeah. mean, is it? D, all of the above, you know? Yeah, yeah I think it's an all the above. You know? Anytime you see anytime you see a comeback like that, you know, it's gonna be they're all they're gonna be mistake eight, you know. It's well, just, you know, a good friend of mine who uh, was a great football player here at Marion High Harding High School, actually coached some football at different times. Gotta get that, that's a live ball. By the name of and I think Gally nope, never mind, they're gonna throw the flag. But a good friend of mine by the name of uh, Thaddeus Carter, who is a fantastic football player, first team All-Ohio guy, uh, co-defensive player of the year in the year 2000. Um, or no, I'm sorry, not 2000, I wanna say like 2001 or 2002. He was actually co-defensive player of the year with Ted, Ted Ginn, right? Believe it or not. Ooh. Coach Carter actually grew up in Georgia before he moved to Marion when he was like, I wanna say 11 or 12 years old. He's a huge Falcons fan. Okay. Huge Falcons fan. and. Uh, I don't think he can still talk about this day. I think he's still in mourning. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, the, uh, sports will bring you incredible highs and, and devastating lows. I know. Uh, just speaking of experience, I was uh, in, in the first row down there at uh, Crew Stadium two years ago when they when they uh, blew their title shot in front of the home fans in Columbus, and that was uh, that was miserable. It's so, gotta hurt, coach. Little reverse, reverse to freight train. Oh, and that is a great, great play by number 28. And that's Colby Fox there. Uh, wow, listen. Yeah, that, I'll tell you what, Franker's still running if he doesn't make listen, that tackle. That's a four, that's a four yard gain. That's a positive gain. Great. Sure, we got four sure. yards on first down. I'll take that. But that young man saved the touchdown. He sure did. Somebody should make sure they buy that kid. And Galleon, someone should make sure they buy that kid a sandwich. Because it would have been 14-7 to seven if he hadn't tackled freight train. Second and six here for Harding. Julian Ladd squirts ahead for, looks like about a three-yard gain. And, Coach, i got to believe here, since we're having a lot of success, run the ball. We may see a little play action bootleg here. I just, I kind of feel it. I could be wrong. It does seem set up. Ladd's out of the ball game here, you know. Um, you're forcing that Galleon defense to respect your run game right now. That seems like seems like uh, maybe go smash mouth with Hill, or you're definitely setting up that play action there. So, oh, there we go. Cornbread makes a man miss. Got Drake the Snake in the flats. And listen, Coach, if you ever go back and you look at my head coaching record and you look at my offensive prowess. I called like three plays, and one of them was bootleg. And baby, I know when it's time to run a little play action pass bootleg, and there you go. There you have it. Just like that. Cornbread hits Drake, the snake, 
Fascio, the uh, the mogul in the making. I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Eat your heart out, Silicon Valley. That's right. You no, know, Thompson looks. Oh, oh look like a little bump way that after like the a fact. Lot of bump and yeah, there, the there it the is. Field. Well, and really, even though that ball looked like it went straight to freight train, that little push from behind pushed him forward, which impeded his ability to catch the ball. Sure did. Well, coach, and I like to see the yellow laundry when it's against the other team. Defense, the 15 -yard penalty for the spot. Well, and you know, Coach, up to this point, besides a fantastic, amazing pass, the Prexies have owned a 7-7, seven to seven, but when you look at, when you're, if we pulled up the stat sheet right now, we looked at yards and who's done what, even though it's a tie game, it just feels like the Prexies have been in control of this game the whole time, the exception that one great pass. Right, it sure has. And you know, we uh, another thing we talked about in the, in the pregame is it, it felt like this. Lodi and Paler! Oh! Wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> Sorry, Coach, I didn't mean to cut you off no, there, but I saw uh, Lodi and Paler there running like he was possessed. Who was it? Uh, was it Yogi Berra that said it's deja vu all over again, or was that a Casey Stengel thing? I, I, I forget. Coach, but, I don't know. You're you the know, baseball aficionado. Here, here we are, a game that Harding's dominated. The score doesn't reflect that yet, and we're down here at the goal line. This is a place where this has got to be clean, and you got to capitalize. Oh, And there baby. we go. Oh, baby. Lodi and Taylor scores its first touchdown as a president. As a president, congratulations, young man. We're happy to have you here at Mary Harding High School. Great run, great series by the Prexies as we see a little bit of yellow on the field. Coach Wessler congratulates him, as does Coach Slater. Coach Slater gives him a big old bear hug there. Listen, I'm going to tell you what. Coach Slater's a pretty bulky dude, man. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Hug, no doubt. You're going to stay you're hug, gonna you know? for a while. Oh, yeah. Smokes. Probably a frustration foul there on the Galleon end. All right, so let's see if green shoes can be true, like the green, green grass at home. Kick is up. Kick is true, and listen, folks. That PAT, that's the most important play in football. Because when you don't make it, one point can be the whole difference. We saw that in Newark game, that Coach. Newark was that week three? Yeah, that was week three. That's the game when we opened up the stadium and the Prexies won in overtime, and I'm up here crying like a baby. Holy smokes. Uh, you know, the uh, the great Jim Valvano once said, if you laugh and you think and you cry, you have your emotions moved to the point of tears on a daily basis. You've lived a heck of a day. You know, and i tell you what, old Jim Valvano, he's one of those guys, Coach, I get goosebumps talking about it right now, when he gives that speech, don't give up, don't ever give up. And I think I think that's true in everything, Coach. And what we've seen out of these Prexies, we've seen some mistakes. We've seen some mistakes in games. We've seen the Prexies give some games away, but we've also seen a gritty, gutty performance by these young men who believe they can win. And that's something. That's that's a big culture shift that we've that we've seen in this program since Coach Brady's come back in the last two, three, four years. These kids now believe they can win. And sometimes that's half the battle, Coach. Just believing you can win. No doubt. No doubt. And, you know, I think just echoing what you said, it, it's palpable. You can feel it. Absolutely. It really is, Coach. And he takes a knee. How about that? How about uh, that? 15 yard line. Hey, I'll take those odds, Coach. Well, listen, right now, listen, you bet your sweet Bibby that Coach Slater got in Detweiler's ear and said, hey, listen, man, that was great coverage. A little bit of a mismatch. We're not going to let that happen again. We're going to fix it, you know? And really, at this point, you know, it's all about getting pressure on the quarterback, which I, which I have faith that the Prexes can do in this situation. Speaking of that, Gallion comes out and trips. 
So maybe trips they're right. A little, uh, maybe they're feeling a little froggy after that uh, great throw Ivy threw last series. Inside handoff. Little Wasn't great expecting spin that. Move. Tell you what, that was a great spin move by Chrisman. He was yeah, stopped. Sure was. And woo, baby, he hit the hit. What, what's that PlayStation? Is that the B button? Uh, PlayStation. I think that's the circle button. It's a circle button. I think button. it's a B on an Xbox. If I'm not, yeah, if I'm I've not been mistaken. Coach, I haven't played a PlayStation forever. I'm on the Xbox, man. Ah. And I don't. When I'm playing football on the Xbox, I don't spin. I just truck people. Yeah, fair enough. Fair there enough. you go. I bought the Xbox because they have the rights to the MLB franchise. Well, there you so. go. You can't go wrong with that, Coach. Oh, and a fumble. Ball's on the ground. Ball's yep. on the ground. You know, Coach, speaking of those Major League Baseball games, holy smokes, I tried to play one of those like a week ago. Okay. And, I, Coach, I, I, you're going to have to give me a tutorial. Video games have passed me by. I guess I've gotten too old. It's uh, We're past NFL sports talk football with John Madden on the Sega Genesis, huh? <laughs> Listen, you remember Tecmo Bowl? All oh you needed to be gosh. was the Raiders. Oh, and man. you had Howie Long on defense and Bo Jackson on offense, and nobody could beat <laughs> what you. What else do you need? I, and then yeah. I, I believe the Chiefs had Christian Okoye, too. Holy smokes. You, uh, could he run? Listen, there's a way back machine for you. Christian Okoye. Holy smokes. Do you remember the, the old school Madden games in which a player would get in, um, injured? And the the ambulance, oh, the algorithm would drive on, onto the players <laughs> onto the field. Like, Holy smokes. That seems counterproductive, but never mind. It's but neither here nor there. Like, hey, but listen, I'm going to tell you what, those 8-bit graphics, oh, man, listen, that's just, <laughs> that's nostalgia, baby. You know? you Reagan was in the White House, and we had Bush number one. Had a little bit, a little bit of eight bit graphics, a little little seven year old Todd Schneider over on Henry Street <laughs> playing some tech mobile. I mean, I almost feel like calling my mom and asking her to make me some macaroni and cheese. I feel Ooh. so good about it. Ooh, he almost that punt was just about blocked. I'm over here talking about mac and cheese, and we almost blocked that punt. Hey, we get a little nostalgic there. That'll happen. We did. That's all right. We did. We got That's excited. All right. We're talking about tech mobile. I'll Who tell doesn't you what, get excited? That sure looked like that was Cody Harris. He made a huge special teams play two weeks ago when we were here. Well, and you know, Coach, I just want to go back to that. You bring that up, Coach. He just about got to that punt. And when Cody Harris picked up that blocked punt and took it in for a touchdown, I just talked about earlier, he had found out that day that his grandmother had passed away. And, uh, you know, Coach, that's, that's just the magic and the beauty of sports, how special things like that are to that young man. And I was able to talk to him, and he just said, Coach, you know, he told me, he said, Coach Schneider, he said, that was a really special moment, and, and, and I'm glad he got to have that, and his parents got to have that too. Lodi and Paler looks like he's about to be tackled. Slicing through that first level of defense there. Slicing and dicing like a Gensu Knight. Holy smokes. Kid can run, coach. He can run. He's got wheels. And he's got good hair. Great hair. Most importantly. Well, listen. Great hair. Look good, feel good, play good. There you go. Absolutely. That's not always true because I didn't always look good, but I played okay. I played good, I guess. Whatever. Depends on who you ask. Coach Brady might tell you a little different. <laughs> little handoff to. That's the hammer. All right, here we go, high backs. Julian Ladd with the counter. Makes a man miss. That's enough for a first down, more than enough for a first down. Well, and I'm gonna tell you what, his, his counter steps were pretty good there. The old football coach of me is watching his footwork, and that's a, that's a pretty good counter footwork. What makes a counter play work is a couple things. First of all, you get some down blocks, on the front side, then you get the backside guard and the backside tackle pull. Backside guard is going to wrap and get the linebacker, and the backside tackle is going to kick out the end. And what allows that timing to happen is the you do the the running back, the tailback does a little crossover step and allows all that to open up. I believe that was 
Hey, there he hey. is. Ask and you shall receive. And I was listen. I was just looking at Coach Kepler and I said, I haven't seen Book. And what do you know? Book it. The night train catches the ball, breaks a couple angles because he puts some sweet moves, some James Brown style moves out there, and gets a seven yard gain. Uh, we'll take that on first down. I'll take that on first down. Ten out of ten times. Great job, Mr. Booker. Little handoff to Mr. Ladd, and Wrapped nothing doing on that there. one. But you know, look at look at that kid. Look at that kid. He's still buzzing his feet, baby. I tell you what, it took it took a whole pack of tigers to bring him. Whole down. pack of tigers, and I'm gonna tell you this: you can't coach you can't coach that. You just have it. And we talked about C.J. McKinney being the motor. C.J. McKinney is the motor. And that's why that kid is successful. But you can't coach hustle, and you can't coach motor, and you can't coach heart. That's right. And heart and a motor can take players who are good and make them great and take players who are average and make them good. Little bootleg pass. Well, and I'm wow. going to tell you, first of all, Drake Fashione, Doing some grown man stuff over there. That's right. He's dragging people off of them. And what you and what we miss on that play is you see Gary Moni Moni. He pulled back from a block that would have been a penalty. He was running and he saw the kid and I watch him and that's a smart play by that kid. So yes, you see Drake Fashion do great things, but what Gary did there was fantastic because he didn't throw the block. Freight train. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, choo choo! The freight train on the touchdown. As the fireworks shoot into the violet sky on this September Friday night under the lights. Got a little poetic there for a second, yeah, Coach. You sure did. Your, uh, your verses. Uh, Sweeter than that OK Cafe pizza I'm going to eat later. Well, listen, Coach, I don't know. Is it sweeter than the calzones? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but Walt Whitman, I am not, sir. The kick Sab is true. Makes it three for three. The kick is true. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick commercial break with the Mary Harding High School Telecom production. Leaderinme.org. Great happens here. Hey, how you doing? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And listen, I, Coach, I keep seeing this commercial with these trash bags. And I think I'm going to be a trash bag for Halloween. What do you think about that? Hey, you know. It won't uh, take much. You go for it. I'm uh, it's pretty cheap. It's, right? It must be nostalgia week because uh, go for the trash bag. But uh, uh, Jess and I, we were uh, planning on doing Legends of the Hidden Temple. So we we are getting we are getting we are getting our blue barracuda shirts and our and our wow. helmets and uh, picking, Listen, picking you, the most nineties names we could come you up gotta with. Know, you so. gotta know some some Nickelodeon from the straight nineties know that stuff. <laughs> I mean next thing you know you're gonna tell me you can't do that on television. When you say I don't know, we're gonna get sly. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. Well, you know, Coach, we're up here. We're talking about the four pillars of Marion City Schools. We've got, you know, the next generation learning environment. We, sure. we we talk about Diploma Plus. We talk about Leader and Me and the Literacy Collab. You know, folks, if you're out there listening, listen. It's important that you read to your kids 20 minutes every night. Now, if your son's 14 or 15, he can read to himself. Right. Right? Right. Yeah. My dad's reading to me when I'm 14 or 15. I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? But if your kids, hey, if your kids that's are. That's all right. That's, that's all, right. all right. But, you know. Very, your young kids, your grade school kids, you know, let's make sure you're reading to them every night, folks. Oh, nothing going on there. And you know, education, I, I kind of, they call water the building block of, of life, right? Water's the basic building block of life. The basic building block of education is literacy, folks. Those who are highly literate 
are those who are successful in life. And the best way to make anybody highly literate is reading to them when they're young kids. You know, and also we talk about the Diploma Plus. You know, we, we do that at Harden. We got the Pathways, Coach. Sure. It's about preparing pathway. kids that, uh, to get that, yeah, to get that Diploma Plus a skill to where they're going to be ready for college, ready for a high-level job, or ready to go into balls on the, the ground. military and the balls on the ground. And I'm up here talking about Diploma Plus, the military, and the ball. Work now. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we got uh, the first college visit of the year, of the year uh, through Europe was to Otterbein University a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And, uh, and they also went to OU, right? Yeah, they did. Which is the alma mater of our wonderful head principal, Jennifer Musbach. Oh, there you Here's go. what most people don't know about Miss Musbach. Do you okay. know she was an all-American high jumper? I did not. At Ohio but now West. I do. Listen, she's bashful and doesn't like to talk about it. How about but that? I will stand up here and sing the praises <laughs> All right. of our fearless leader, our head principal, Jennifer Musbach, who's an All-American at Ohio Wesley. How about that? All-American. How about that? They, uh, You know, the, the folks at Gear Up were, were kind enough to let me go on that trip to Otterbein to go see the alma mater. So did you uh, did you run, any, you run any professors you knew? Still I some people there? Yeah, I sure did. I, uh, I saw my favorite professor of all time who teaches... Uh, comedy in English. Her name's Cam. She's a great human. And uh, went and saw some of the old education professors and uh, you know, actually got, got, onto, got onto their alumni council on well, how they dog. teach uh, or, you know, how are they preparing teachers out of school. So that was a, that was a fruitful visit for me and uh, it was a homecoming week, so just uh, nice to reflect there. Well, so. and you know, Coach Kaplinger, not only are not only are you a great teacher, sir, and a great uh, and a, and a great example of all the wonderful things that's Marion, Ohio, but I'm sure that you make Otterbein University proud with uh, what you've done with your career, sir. So I kudos to you. It. You know, and a funny story, Coach. I went to, it's very similar to one you just told. I went to Urbana University. Okay. And uh, last year during spring break, I took my children to the Ohio Caverns, which is right in Bell Fountain, Ohio, or rather kind of right outside of Bell Fountain. If you know anything about that area, Bell Fountain's about 10 miles from Urbana, so I decided when we were down there, I'd take my kids. My wife and I were like, let's take the kids to, let's show them a little bit of UU's campus. We'll go eat at some restaurants in Urbana, and I'm on UU's campus, and I'll be dog, and as I'm walking around, I don't look and see one of my professors, old Dr. Pond, and I look I'll at Dr. Pond, and I go, Doc Pond, and he turns around, he looks at me, and he goes, Todd Schneider? <laughs> and I couldn't believe he remembered oh, me, man. Coach. That's cool. Listen, That's and we're cool. talking, and listen, I don't want to age myself, but it's been, uh, it's been about 13 years, 14 years since I stepped foot on Urbana's campus. And the fact that Doc Pond remembered me. And here's the cool thing about Doc Pond, and I know people are like, you know, we're tired of hearing you talk about your professors, but i got to tell this great story. All right. Doc Pond, believe it or not, played baseball at Ohio State. Okay. And also, Coach, he played football for Woody Hayes. I can only imagine. He was on the 1960 National imagine. Championship team. And you know who one of his baseball classmates was as well? Who is that? Bobby Knight. So Bobby Knight played basketball and baseball at Ohio State. Wow. Dr. Pond, Dean Pond, great guy from the uh, – Miami Valley area down there around Urbana played college football for the Woody Hayes has a national championship ring on his finger from the 1960 national championship team and he also played with Bobby Knight if I'm correct I believe the Buckeyes maybe won themselves a college world series in the 1960s as well coach I'm probably gonna have to google that while we're up here because I'm curious right. about that yeah my uh my knowledge is pretty limited to the to the pro game but Cornbread goes oh. long. Choo! Choo! Freight train scores a touchdown. I didn't know freight trains could fly, Coach Schneider. <laughs> Maybe on the Jetsons. Yeah, now we're going to the way, way back machine. On the Jetsons, the freight train can fly. Listen, man. It's good to see this offensive explosion by the Prexies. You know, and I, I'm telling you right now, a running game opens up all of that. And folks, we may have found it with Julian Ladd. We have a small sample size of what young Julian's been able to do, but I like what you see so far. I like what I see so far. And listen, the other kid with what may be the first or second best hair on the team, I don't know. 
throws the ball to Freight Train, and Freight Train's got some good hair too, Coach. No Listen, doubt, no doubt. I, I think Freud would have a field day with me up here talking about hair. The guy without hair keeps talking about hair. So, wow. Nonetheless, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Well, you know, Coach, and we got to mention, listen, there's three minutes and 18 seconds left, but there's still plenty of time left in this ball game for Galleon, which has been a, which is a 4-1 team and has been you mentioned before a, the juggernaut game, on a juggernaut on offense. There's still plenty of time. And listen, if you watched that Pleasant game last week, and I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but it was a tale of two halves. Sure. You know, the Prexies outplayed them and owned them in the first half, and in the second half, they just couldn't get out of their own way. And Pleasant, to their credit, played a clean, crisp ball game. And they were able to capitalize. Look at that, I see uh, Elijah Potros Collier on the sidelines there, number 63, next to Russell the Muscle. That's gonna stay oh, in. That's gonna, stay, that's gonna in. stay in. Whoa, listen. Wow. I get what the guy was doing there. He thought it was gonna be, but like we talked about, those footballs. I don't know where they're gonna go, coach. Well, that's a you know, that's a heck of a gamble on special teams too, on kickoff, because that's a live ball. Absolutely. Right? If the Harding president gets there first, you're giving up possession 15 yards away from the end zone. That is a big time gamble. That's a huge gamble. Coach, I don't gamble. For a couple reasons. One, I don't like to lose what's mine. And right. last time I checked, Kenny Rogers perfected gambling. Because <laughs> he knows when to hold him and he knows when to fold him. Knows when to walk away and he knows <laughs> when to run. He does. Absolutely. Speaking of Kenny Rogers, what a, what a great beard that guy had. <laughs> Holy smokes. Uh, see, now if we're going to start talking beards, that's where I'm going to get envious here because I can't grow any facial hair. Listen, I can, grow, I can grow great facial hair. It just gets too itchy. Speaking of great beards, Mr. Mullins uh, Telecom has a fantastic beard. Yeah, it's Some would hit. say that he looks like the basis for Van Halen, Michael Anthony. I've been saying that for years. Okay. So if you're at home watching this, look up Michael Anthony on Google. And that's exactly that's what Mr. Mullins sharing looks a booth like. With. Yeah. yeah, and actually, not only that, Mr. Mullins is also a um, a seasoned musician. He, is. he plays a lot of gigs with a couple different bands. He sings. He plays guitar. He plays bass. You know, there's there's a lot of things that man can do. He's a man of many talents, ladies and gentlemen. Roll out here. Nothing going on. First down. Oh, second down there, rather. Sorry. Well, and. Uh, Ivy's pass there uh, got hit with a little roundup weed killer. Is that good? Is that bad? That was bad, wasn't it, Coach Kaplinger? Be honest with me. I'm pretty ambivalent towards yeah. that. So. Maybe at halftime we'll, we'll try to come up with some, yeah, some, yeah, some Ivy puns. So third down here. Well, third down. In a quarter where we have not much called a football game. <laughs> we have <laughs> we've just <laughs> We've just stood up here and bantered, folks. Although, listen, I did explain the, the counter play, so that's good. That's, that's true. Good. There's your tech talk. That, there you go. And it looks Laundry's down. Looked like a timeout was called first. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I believe they're going to give him the timeout. I believe they're going to give him the timeout. Ooh, they are not. So are they going to? So here we go, Coach. It's, I won't say third and Waldo. We'll just say third and, uh, third and Summerlot Hoffman Road. Third and Gallion. Third fine. and Gallion. That's pretty good. Third and Gallion. Get fitting. I, I would say that if there's ever time to use that, uh, this would be the game. Yeah, fair Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. I was holding on to that. I should have saved it, but we're good. No, but that's third, okay, Coach. Third I'll and 11 it. here. I'll take it. Third and 11. Third and Gallion. Ivy takes a snap, he looks, and it looks like a little jailbreak type screen there, and, and he, he stays, stays on up. his feet. Wow. And a whole slew of Prexies. It looks like Mr. The Detonator Detweiler. Maybe. Yeah, Seth Tyler's in on that. I see little Justin Bentley getting up. Back from the 
So based upon what I've seen Galleon doing punting here, I gotta believe we're gonna get some good field position with two timeouts and a minute 50 and some change left. Oh, and that Just one was almost blocked. Good catch. Freight Train gets the ball at the By 50. Train. Makes a man miss. Hold on the ball, young man. And he's still running his feet. Gets down to about the 30. I'll tell you what, he's done it on the ground. He's done it in the air. He sure looked hungry to do that on special teams. He outran those two blockers in front of him. He was ready to go. I'm telling you, listen, in this game right now, I think we just need to put a cape on that kid. I'm telling you, man. And coach, we talked about this. It ain't the size of the fight in the dog. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. It's not the size of the dog. I got it wrong. Coach. It's okay. It's not the size of the it's dog in the good. fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. There we go. The freight train got a lot of fight. That's right. My That's man. That's right. So, All right. 97 ticks left on the clock here. Play action. Play action. Cornbread rolls right. Goes it deep. He's got Drake. To the snake. All day. And I'll tell you what, that is the 27th straight point that Harding just put up. They're yes, outscoring Yalian 27 to nothing in this quarter. Well, and you know, Coach, once again, what was that? Play action and the fact that we have established a solid running game opens it up coach that's right and listen if this is the offense that we're going to see from here on out i like our chances for the rest of the season there's definitely a uh, there's a renewed venom in that offensive attack here there is a renewed venom holy smokes cornbread put some gravy on it drake the snake celebrates in the end zone lobby and paler is running all over him I haven't seen someone run that much since Forrest Gump, coach. I was running. Oh. I've been waiting for a Forrest Gump. Yeah, have you seen that? Year. Speaking of, have, Tom Hanks, have you, did you see his David Pumpkin skit on SNL last year? I did not. I think I laughed for two weeks straight on that, David. Go home and watch that. It just, I, I don't know if it's because it's Tom Hanks and it, it, it should be serious, but it isn't. But that David Pumpkin skit is one of the funniest things I think I've ever seen. You know, one of my favorite skits is obviously the classic where Chris Farley's trying out for the Chippendale. Yes, yeah. And then obviously the cowbell sketch. Right. It's right. fantastic. I was always a fan of Wayne and Garth. Uh, <laughs> you know, anything Chris Rock did, obviously. And, you know, one of the most undersung SNL guys was obviously always Phil Hartman. Unfrozen caveman lawyer. That was one of my favorites, Coach. Tyler to kick off here. No gambling on this one. Oh, good open field tackle by number 14 coach. Who we got there? That's Jemiah Captivate. We haven't called that young man's name yet. That, we have not. But Jemiah we have now. Captiveville captivated me with that tackle. All right. That was a good All open right. field tackle. Sign sealed, delivered. I'm yours. That was good right there, baby. First and 10 for Galleon here. Just shy of their own 30 yard line. Just shy. But not too shy, shy. Oh, oh ball. ball's loose. Oh, oh and once again, that I football tell you which does what. funny, funny things bounces off the foot of, I believe, maybe. Yeah, the Hawk? I think it was the Hawk. I, I think, think it was I, the Hawk. I think I could see the white of his eyes here. He wanted to scoop and score that. Boy, and in and in doing so, Boy, I think knocked Allie. the ball back to Ivy. But you know what? Heads up play. And, uh, you know, that's, I think, the second or third botched snap there for Ivy. And, uh, Absolutely. Not to, not to quote Hall and Oates, but I think he's out of touch. He's out of touch. That's a good Hall and Oates quote right there, yeah, Coach. Thanks, man. Thank I think he is totally out of touch. Little read option there. Absolutely. And Seth Tyler. No, check that. The detonator, Detweiler. Swallowed that up like a gator. And we got a flag. Maybe a little, maybe a little extra over there. The uh, Mr. Gornflow said it was Quave on the tackle. Uh, I saw Mr. Detweiler, so Quave was in on it as well. 
A little flag here. We'll see who this is against. The refs are talking here a little bit. And Galleon's backing up, so I think they kind of know it might be against them. Or not, I don't know. You know, Galleon could be getting, if this is in fact on Galleon, they gotta be, those young men gotta be frustrated right now. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, those those kids are a little, you know, they're a little they're a little upset right now, Coach, a little downtrodden. I'm sure coming in this game, they didn't think they'd be staring at a 35-7 deficit at halftime. Oh, no doubt. You, you know, know, they practice and play hard, too, just like we do. Absolutely. And Absolutely. When when you're staring at a scoreboard and you see that, it's hard to keep your emotions. So, you know, when I was in college, Coach, and I played for Urbana, we didn't win a lot of ball games. So I know what it's like to stare up at a 35-7 scoreboard knowing you're working your butt off, but things just aren't happening. So, so I get it. I get, I get the frustration that they're upset. With timeout there. Eight seconds left. Galleon's coach calls a timeout. Eight seconds until half. So the Prexies take a commanding lead into halftime. Timeout, Galleon. All right, during this timeout, we're going to take a short, short commercial break with the Mary Harding High School Telecom production. You are now banned from curbside pickup. This is the other new bag in the neighborhood. Hi, guys. What's shaking? Hey there. Welcome. You know, I love the club. It's the reason I'm here. It's, it's taught me so many lessons, and I can talk about it in a positive way, in an honest way, for the rest of my life. You know, in a community or in a town, your role models are the people that you deal with, that, that, that are in your face, that you talk to, that you can ask questions to, not necessarily some basketball player or actor on screen. Three, two seconds. All right, folks, we're back with that message from Denzel Washington, and I would be remiss if I did not mentioned that Pizza Brothers is uh, providing pizza for the football players after the game tonight. And Red Lobster actually bought pizza last week, and Donato's has bought some pizza too for these boys after the game. So a lot of people in this community believe in these boys and doing good things for them and supporting the football program. And with it's that get play, half -time draw play, it's halftime, <laughs> folks. 35-7. to seven. We will be back after halftime, but to tell them, folks, please enjoy the Mary Harding High School Band. This is the Mary Harding High School Telecom production where the Prexies are beating the Galleon Tigers at halftime, 35-7. to We'll be back after halftime. Go Prexies.
Nice cameo here from Mr. Cameron, the uh, the third part of this triumvirate here. No, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Schneider is uh, on his way, so I'm covering until he gets back. It's uh, all good. Coach Keplinger, what do you think about uh, how you think Marion's defense has held themselves through the uh, first half of tonight's game? I thought they've uh, acquitted themselves very nicely. You know, you're talking about a Galleon team we mentioned in the pregame. They're scoring 32 points a game. You know, um, I think that Julian Ladd in that first half has, has really opened that playbook and really uh, you know, given Harding a lot of options there. So. Absolutely. And uh, just in time, Coach Snyder, uh, we are live right now, Coach Snyder. Thanks for having me, and I hope everything worked out for you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. I'm out of breath. Uh, had to duck and weave and make my way up here, signed a couple autographs. Not Little, bad. Uh, Little cameo there by Mr. Scott Cameron, who was with us last week. Harding receives the ball here. Tough sled in there for Drake the Snake. Or no, check that. That was Quave Booker. I apologize. Was not Drake the Snake. That was the night train. Yeah, anytime that ball, you know, anytime you get a kick that goes to an up back there, there's not going to be a lot of space to. Uh, to maneuver there, so hold on to the ball. Get yourself a pretty good starting spot. Absolutely, the offensive line runs out there. Hayden Silky Hamilton, the senior center, puts his hand on the ball as the rest of the offensive line gets down in a stance. High Backside snap, pole. handled. That was a counter double keep fake by Noah, and he reverses. And Maybe tried to do just a little he too much He tried to do there. too much there. He did. Listen, and you can't fault the effort. You can't fault the athleticism. No, no doubt. No doubt. You can't fault what he tried to make happen there. But uh, go north, young man. Go north. I tell you what, he's got better moves than I do, coach. Wow. You should see me on the dance floor. It's terrible. Oh, man. You're a, you're a modern-day John Travolta, I'm sure of it. Modern-day John Travolta. Because my hair, don't touch my hair. Is that a good John Travolta? Probably not. I prefer John Travolta's Vinnie Barbarino, quite frankly. Julian Ladd oh. breaks loose. Oh, as they try to strip the ball. And Julian that Ladd. Might be enough for a first down there. Somehow, somehow, Lodi and Paler comes out of that scrum with the ball and the ever elusive. First down. How about that? How about that? Who's the famous sports announcer that always says that, Coach? How about that? Oh, man. Is that, that's not Vin Scully, is it? Nah, no. Scully's had some good calls, but I don't I don't think that was. Old Vin Scully, he just retired too, didn't he, Coach? Yeah, up last year. So. Class so, act, Vin Scully. Definitely different hearing hearing a Dodger game without him. I've got that uh, MLB TV package yeah. so you can get the home and away broadcast any game and I'll tell you what you know I'm not I'm not by any stretch of the imagination a Dodger fan but if it's late and I was going to sleep and Clayton Kershaw was pitching and Ben Scully was calling a game I'll tell you what you could put that you could put that up there with any time frame in, in baseball history. So. I mean that's about as American as apple pie man. You got an ace on the mound, and you got a legend, Vin Scully, uh, calling it. You can't beat that, Coach. Little backside guard pull there. Lad. Julian keeps his feet moving. That kid just won't go down, will he, Coach? Nah, he sure won't. He's a 
been a hard runner all evening. Well, you know, Coach, and while we're up here talking about announcers, I got to know your opinion on this. I've always been flabbergasted that Joe Nuxel, for the years uh-huh. that he spent as an announcer for the Reds, okay, and, and 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 his saying, which is actually on the Red Stadium, this is the old left-hander left routing third, third and heading, heading for home. home. I mean, I yeah. get goosebumps when I think oh, about Joey oh, Nuxle. Absolutely. Center. How is Joe Nuxle not a Ford C. Frick Award winner as a Hall of Fame announcer? I don't understand that. That is baffling to me. Listen, if you want to tell me why Pete Rose isn't in the Hall of Fame, I'll buy it. Ho! Oh! Freight train! Freight train! Made a lot of something out of nothing there. Whoa. I'll tell you what, that was a low pass on that uh, pass to the flats there. He switches fields, and that's a long way going. But, well, and I think, Coach, but, unfortunately, it was all for naught. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, unfortunately, when a reverse field opens up like that, it does so with the aid of a holding call. Tell you what, you had me so fired up about Joe Nux all there, I didn't even see the flag at first. Well, like the Beatles said, you can't do that. Do you have a favorite Beatles song, Coach Schneider? Coach, there's too many to like. All right. But. I could give you a favorite album. Okay. The White Album. Okay. Doesn't get any better. I think you're in pretty good company Basically, there. Basically, every single era of the Beatles experience is, is on that album in some way in a different type of song. Whether it's the early I Want to Hold Your Hand Beatles to the Psychedelic Beatles to the We're Going to Break Up and We've Got Long Hair and Beards and We're Hanging Out in India Beatles. You know what yeah, I mean? I just, yeah, yeah. The White Album's a great album. Fair enough. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Absolutely. We get a timeout here. And uh, while we get a timeout, Coach, I think it's important that we talk about some of the other great things going on in sports here at Mary Harding High School. I got to tell you this. Maggie Pitts. Maggie Pitts. Wins a tennis MOAC championship yet again. How about that? How about that? Listen, and Maggie's such a, such a great kid, and I tease her all the time. I was like, Maggie, if you want to be a great tennis player, you got to work on your tennis grunts. You know, like when you when you watch all the great tennis players play, they oh, grunt sure. when they hit yeah. the ball. Yeah. So I would like to think maybe somewhere along the line, Maggie took my advice or the fantastic coaching of her father, Blaine, whatever. It, and the the answer lies somewhere between those two. Somewhere between those two. I, I'm not going to say it's 50-50. I'm not going to say it's 90-10, but somewhere between those well, two. Well, and I'm going to tell you, we are very proud of Maggie Pitts at Marion Harding High School, and I should also mention that second doubles MOAC champs were Autumn Rollins and Nicole Flock. So congratulations to those young ladies for representing our great school so very well. Well, Julian Ladd has a great carry there, but when it's second and 31, a 10-yard coach, we forgot to mention, that was second Waldo. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Julian picks up. Let's see what they give him here. That was a, come on, oh, wow, that was 31 minus 17. Coach, my math skills are terrible. Was it about a 14-yard game? Is that a 14? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So listen, a 14-yard game. We're definitely game. not math teachers. I'll we are tell not you math teachers. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, holy smokes. That, uh, that humanities brain doesn't do the math. Oh, well, listen, I always say we're glorified <laughs> philosophers. We just like to talk about, you know, old we're, dead people. We're not glorified philosophers. <laughs> glorified philosophers had charisma. Glorified philosophers do have charisma. So a 13-yard gain is good, 14-yard gain is good, but when you're staring at third and Chicago, 13 yards doesn't really matter. And no reason not to play this safe here. No, no, I totally agree, Coach. I mean, listen, we got a, we got a four-touchdown lead, but that don't mean anything in a football game because anything can happen. Colin Hill with you know, another a solid good punt. punt. Well, and you know, listen. Colin Hill is a fantastic high school punter. In my years of being involved in Marion Harding as a coach and in the, involved in the football program, I've seen some good punters. Colin, I got to say, is probably one of the better ones we've seen in the last decade. 
Ryan Sayer had some had some pretty good punts last year, but overall, I've been pretty impressed with Collins punting this year. As have I. And by the way, Coach, we got to talk again about this field. Ooh. My goodness, ain't it? Ain't, ain't she pretty? It is. She's you know, pretty. I'll tell you what, we've had uh, we've had some practices out here, some soccer games out here. Uh, it is it is definitely a sight for sore eyes. Boy, howdy! Speaking of that. Uh, Freight train, who's done a little bit of everything tonight, except for, you know, come up with a cure for world hunger in on the tackle. And and we talk about this field, and we got to talk about Ohio Health. We got to talk about Matthews. We got to talk about all the Marion City School employees, and we got to talk about our current superintendent, Mr. Fuji, our former superintendent, Mr. Barber. We got to talk about the board. We got to talk about, you know, Dr. J. Moodley. We got to talk about all the great people, and if I forget anybody, Lord forgive me, but we got to talk about the great people that have allowed this to happen, you know? And he just throws, Ivy just throws it away. But you know, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of great people that made this happen. And the great thing about a field like this, Coach, is this is a footprint that's going to last for a lot of generations. When you look at the fact that the stadium was built in the late 1930s as a WPA. As a depression era A project. depression yeah. era sure. construction. Sure. And, you know, we put a new track in. We put new bleachers on the other side. We put new bathrooms down at the other end along with a new concession stand. I mean, we also just put a brand new fence up along Presidential Avenue. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, Coach, but it's, it's nice to see the old girl get a makeover and our citizens, our business owners, and our administrators believe enough in this old girl to give her a makeover to keep her around for a lot longer than what she's already been. The Tigers go five wide there. Ivy is picked off by Seth Tyler. Oh! How Seth about that? Ham. How about that? He thought for a split second about taking us to the Holy Land and the Promised Land, scoring himself a touchdown, but Galleon said, eh, eh. No soup for you, sir. What a great pick by Seth Laham, though. You know, Coach, I, I think it'd be interesting to say that, uh, look at that, Coach Brady, Coach Chris Brady, goes up to do a chest bump with Seth, and uh, Coach Chris Brady was a college football player, and, uh, he was a linebacker, Coach. He didn't have a lot of hops there. That's an A for effort, though. I, listen, I give him an A for effort. We can't all be Hakeem Olajuwon. We all Imagine, cannot you know, be Hakeem Olajuwon. You know, we cannot. We can't. We cannot. It would be nice. It would be cool. Listen, I can at least touch the net on a basketball. There hoop. you go. Oh! Law the Impaler squirts ahead on what is a positive first down play for a pickup of what looks about like three yards there, Coach Kemp. You know, and also, Coach, we stand up here and we talk about we talk about the football players, but you know, one thing we haven't done is we haven't mentioned the cheerleaders. We haven't mentioned these these young ladies that, that, that stand down there on the track. They work their butts off and, you know, they work hard. You know? They do. They do. They're, they're a good group. Of young ladies, coached by Coach Beth Collins. We got Alicia Rux. We got Sydney McCoy. We got Hydea Barron. We got Kenzie Eisman, Shelby Martin, Ariana Reese, Emily Cox, Jaden Smith, Evelyn Abrams, and Ariel Shirley. You know, and I'm gonna tell you what right now. These young ladies go to competitions. They, they. I'm telling you, they can do backflips and back bends and kicks and all kinds of crazy things that if I did coach I would fall apart. Yeah, you know, I uh, it takes an athlete to do what they do sure and they does. are most certainly athletes, I sir. I grew up in, in pretty much a cheer house. My mom yes. coached, my sister Your, your mother was a cheerleading yeah, coach forever. You know, I uh, I uh, saw that firsthand that I that I knew better than to uh, than to say anything less than flattering never, about cheerleading. You learned young never to question the proud of right, a cheerleader. Right. Because one of those cheerleaders, your mama, might have given you a backhand. Yeah, pride and I probably would have deserved You probably <laughs> would have deserved it. Sometimes in life, mothers know best. And when the backhand flies, sometimes it needs to. Oh, looks like Hayden Silky Hamilton is hobbling just a little bit. But he's walking off on his own power. 
Funny story about how Hayden got the nickname Silky. All right, go on then. He has a pair of practice pants. Yes. That are shiny like the game pants. Oh, okay. And, 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 and there's really nothing much to the story, but because of that, they said his pants look silky, so yeah, he got the nickname works. Hayden so Silky Hamilton. There you go. And I don't know if there's a better nickname. Here we go. Sabi is actually going to go for a three-pointer here. Let's see if this young man can make it. Plonny. Holy smokes. Plonny. I tell you what, coach. As his soccer coach, listen, I'm beaming for the young man because I know how fantastic of a kid he is. As his soccer coach, you got to be you gotta be very happy with him, coach. Oh, absolutely. You know, obviously uh, picked up uh, place kicking duties last year. Uh, anytime I talk about the kid, you know, he, he is one of the hardest working individuals that I've been, you know, that it's been uh, my privilege to coach on a soccer pitch. It's just, that's just matter of fact. So, well, good for you him, know, you know. You know, coach, he's a good soccer player. He's a good, he's a good high school kicker on a football team. But he's even, he's an even better young he's man. He's a good human being, man. He's that, just a good that kid. That kid can light up a room. I'll he tell can. you why, man. I mean, the kid's got a million-dollar smile. It should be noted that Seth Laham, Tyler, whose name we announce quite frequently, is also his brother. How about that? How about that? It's a lot of athleticism in one family, I'll tell you what. There's a in that family. And their older brother pitched, it, pitched in college, Sean. Sean's a heck of an athlete, man. In fact, I got to talk to Sean last week, and uh, he graduated and actually has some eligibility left, and I know that he's going to try out, even though he's done playing, but he's got some eligibility left. He's going to go try out at a couple big-name colleges, he told me. So we wish, uh, we wish him luck. Absolutely. I can only imagine pitching. It is uh, probably one of the loneliest places in sports it's kind of like that old uh, three dog night song one is the loneliest number yeah, that you, yeah you're right. that's a great song uh -huh. right we just ruined it though we did i don't sound like chuck negron that's for sure he's a much better singer than me lead singer of three dog night read option again ivy keeps it and i think Coach, we might, I think I heard Mr. Gornflow, Brent Gornflow. Uh, we're in uh, the running clock portion. I think we're on the running days. clock rule. Now, if Galleon were to score, I do believe the running clock is rescinded. But as it stands right now. 36, right? Yes. Okay. As it stands right now, the running clock is alive and well. Or is it more than 20? Uh, well, I guess it's whatever we've got more yeah. than now. Because okay. that three-pointer put us over the edge, I believe. Now. Allowed for the running clock to happen. A little counter double there by the Tigers. Should be noted that the Tigers of Galleon spell the name Tigers correctly. The Tigers of Mansfield do not. They put a Y in their Tigers. Never been able to figure that one out, Coach. I, I've been told, actually, I think there's by a, my sister, the cheerleader. I think there's a lore the, the to this. The story yes. behind it between, uh, was it Maslin Washington, Maslin Washington and Mansfield Senior. Mansfield Senior. And uh, the loser had to take the incorrect Whoa. pronunciation or excuse me spelling not to get i didn't mean to cut off your story there oh go do you but do what you gotta do the night train bringing the wood yeah he's, holy he's smokes late. but you're right though coach i think you are right about that um maslin and mansfield uh many moons ago before any of us were born played a football series and whoever won it would be able to spell Tigers correctly. So this day, Mansfield is the T.Y. Tigers. Speaking of Mansfield, uh, senior, I miss playing those guys. Yeah, that you want to talk about a, fun, a beautiful stadium? That was a fun, uh, fun rivalry, and Tiger Stadium was. Uh, well, was that's first one of those. Class. That's one of those rivalries, coach. That's never going to go away. It'll come back. I remember sure. when I was in high school, we played Mansfield, baby. Ooh, those 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 practices that week. Ooh, they were something else. <laughs> We beat them uh, two out of four times when I was in high school. My senior year, we went down there, and uh, we beat them on their turf. It was a heck of a game. I actually got knocked out in the game, Coach. I don't remember much of it. Oh, I got a concussion. Yikes. Yeah. So you can Pro tell me I Pro did something in that game. I'm like, really, I did? Protocol isn't exactly what it uh, 
what it is now. You no. Know? Well, and honestly, talk about the way concussions are treated these days. You know, it's done that way to keep kids safe. But back when I played, which wasn't that long ago, well, I guess it was. We're coming up on 20 years. It's 17 years ago. I, I keep telling my actually hey, than that. it's not long in the grand scheme of it's like 19 years ago but nonetheless <laughs> wow i'm getting old coach. yeah i'm approaching 10 years out of high school it crept up on me <laughs> listen mr mullins is standing here behind us like listen i've been out of high school longer than both of y'all combined so be quiet <laughs> but you know uh they, they treated concussions way different back then and had concussions you got your bell wrong back then you, you did know? and had concussions been treated then, as they are now, I probably wouldn't have played much beyond the fifth or sixth game of my senior year. Mr. Ladd turns it up. And it takes a, a little swing. bit extra there. Well, uh, you know, I think the crowd wants a flag, but I don't think I don't think a flag's warranted there. There was a slew of bodies going out of bounds, and those things happen. I don't think there's anything malicious going on there. But listen, I'm I'm happy with what I'm seeing out of Julian. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I've think, talked uh, about that kid a lot, but uh, but he can move. Got Colin the Hammer Hill at fullback. Tell you what, I'll be interested next week. Get on and see uh, what the numbers look like for uh, yards after contact because yeah. he has made a lot of those first efforts miss, and I'll tell you what, that, that's Lack huge. Well, and I'm here to tell you, Coach. If you look at this, one of the, when they talked about when Carlos Hyde was at Ohio State and then Zeke was there, especially Carlos Hyde, they'd always talk about how Carlos Hyde rarely ever got tackled for a loss. He always managed to get forward. And really, when you watch Julian tonight, there's, I think he's only really had one play. I, I mean, we're talking third carry of the game when, yeah. when that adrenaline's still, yeah. you know, he's so still one play to go. Sure. In this whole day gun game where he's touched the ball, he's at a negative yard. Calling the hammer hill. Pull back keep. Scrolls it outside. He might go. Oh. Well, you know what? You'll take a, you'll take a 45-yard carry on a fullback dive. Well, and you know, <laughs> what you saw out of Colin there is exactly what we saw when he scored the game-winning touchdown against Newark. He ran into a huge pile there, saw nothing happening, and he had the football knowledge sense iq awareness to realize hey i can bounce it out and when he did that against newark he just bounced it out and ran that kid over at the goal line and here he takes it 45 yards smart play by that young man silky lad and silky coming Check out. out of the game silky lad how about that that's a, that's a silky the, lad. The Motor McKinney takes over the at center. Motor McKinney. Motor in. What's your prize to score a touchdown? That was pretty bad. That was wasn't it? That's all right. Yeah. Nah, we night, are we night, are not Night Ranger. Night Ranger. Which played at the Popcorn Festival a couple of years ago. Yeah, they did. They opened uh, right before. And oh, how about that, Mr. Mullins? Mr. Mullins out here playing chess again. Opened for Night for Ranger. Night Ranger. Are you, kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's I don't think cool, he is. That's the coolest thing since I went to Rush 40, okay? I saw a Rush, uh -oh. saw a Rush in concert, okay? Well, and they introduced themselves as the band that opened for Kiss. The band that Hilarious. opened for Kiss. Hilarious. Not, we're, we're not the best three-piece band on the face of the earth. We are the band that opened for Kiss. Speaking of Rush, opening for Kiss, and Mr. Mullins rubbing elbows with rock and roll royalty, ladies and gentlemen. It's the fourth quarter. We're going to take a short commercial break. Here with the Mary Hart High School Telecom Production. The leader in me.org. Great happens here. Hey, how you doing? Good. Haven't seen you around before. Are you new in the neighborhood? Yeah. Haven't you heard about the new state law on yard waste bags? No, I guess not. Well, if yard waste is set up by the curb for pickup, state law requires residents to use a compostable bag, like me, or a large paper bag, or a hauler provided cart. Plastic bags like you are now banned from curbside pickup. Hey, and we are back once again with a Marion Harding High School Telecom production. 
Start of the fourth quarter here, still in running clock territory, if you're wondering why that clock started to start the quarter. And I'll tell you what, that's a third straight carry to Hill. They're going to reward him for that for that 45-yard scurry there from the fullback side. Well done by the young man. Well done. Well done. And, you know, once again, Colin Hill, good young man, great young man. Uh, I know his mom and dad, Jeff and Rachel, they're good people. And listen, we got to talk about this offensive line because that's why these things are happening. We got to talk about Isaiah Ross. We got to talk about Silky. We got to talk about Colliers out there. We got to talk about Drake Fashion. We got to talk about Zach Keller. We got to talk about Kyle Tapp. And listen, we also got to talk about none other than the legendary Robert Stone. Robert Stone, the offensive line coach extraordinaire. He's got to be excited. And, and one heck of a mean mugger. He is a mean uh, mugger. I will tell you what. Well, World-class mean mugger. And I have never met a pickier eater in the world than Coach Robert Stone. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I can vouch for you there, living with a guy for uh, for a year in college. So. He also went to Otterbein, right? Yes, he did. We got a lot of we got a lot of people at Harding High School right now who are Otterbein grads, don't we? Yeah, we got uh, Mr. Cress. Uh, we have Mr. Cress. We have the, uh, Mr. Spanish Pace, teacher. Mr. Smith, myself, Coach Stone. Coach Stone. There's, uh, there's quite a few of us there. Quite a nest of us. There is. Well, I would say right now we got quite a few uh, blue knights at the high school too. We got Coach Slater, uh, Mrs. Flock, myself, and. Uh, Special Ed teacher, Mr. Haycox, was oh, also a go. blue knight. We figured out we were there at the same time. Small world sometimes. It's a small world after all. So it's 44-7 here. Tyler to kick off. Green shoes. Ball bounces high. With the tackle. Davion Sims. The junkyard. The junkyard, Davion Sims. We'll uh, take this moment here as we are early in the fourth quarter to say hi to Grandma. You got to say hi to Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Love you. Coach Kavlinger loves you. And once again, folks, remember, this is a Maryland High School Telecom production. If you're lucky enough to catch it on Channel 18 because you have Spectrum Cable, that's fantastic. But if you don't have Spectrum Cable, you can still watch it on YouTube at the MCS uh, Telecom Channel, HHS Telecom Channel. And really, all you got to do is search the games. Listen, I, I watch them because um, I love watching these boys play football. And... Uh, you know, I just I love watching. It's something I've something that Marion Harding High School has always done that's very neat for these youngsters, and it goes all the way back to when I was in high school, coach. Oh, sure, yeah, Listen, I remember growing up watching Channel 18. Absolutely, like, oh, that's cool. Well, and you know what was funny back when I was doing it, uh, Doug Kyle, who was a longtime English teacher and a uh, AD before he retired, sure, would do it along with Mr. Rick Huddle, who was another English teacher. Oh, man. And I be dog. Those guys always called me TJ, which is my brother's name. Oh, no. Older brother? Older brother. You get that. Yeah, you get that. He called me TJ. And listen, we played completely different. We played completely different positions. Sure, sure. My brother was a pretty boy wide receiver. No offense, wide receivers. I love y'all. You know, and I was, uh, I, was, I was a defensive guy myself. But, you know, and if you think about this, that's one of the great things about Marion Harding High School. What other high school in Marion, Ohio, is every single home game, every single time you step on the field, is it going to be televised? And I'm going to tell you this, folks, no other ones. Not only that, every home basketball game is also televised as well. Yeah, that is, uh, and we've that also, is definitely and not our realm of expertise, that is being not former wrestling basketball. coach yourself. No, I, I, I know as much is, about basketball uh, as I do about Barbara Streisand, which is nothing. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 True story. How about that? How about them apples? I just heard Clear Fork is uh, running away against uh, the Vikings. Of River Valley. Yeah, River Valley, uh, you know, they're struggling a little bit this they year. They are struggling but a little I bit this year. You know, that's, and we will see this uh, as the season winds down. 
clear for it. Get out your 50 you know, 50 one of the best teams in their respect. No. Well, they are no joke. Clearfork is one of the top-rated teams in Division Four, and right now they seem – right now there's a lot of good teams in the MOAC, but right now they seem to be the class of the league, and the Prexies play them game 10. So, quite frankly, if the Prexies are able to uh, – Prexies are able to continue to do what they do, able to do what they do, play mistake-free football, and possibly go into Week 10 doing very well. And listen, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but put it this way. If the Prexies can, if the, if the Prexies play well, they can go into Week Ten against Clear Fork with a chance for some good things to happen. Put it that way. I'll just, I'll stop at that because I don't want to jinx it. I'm going to cut you off because the first one there is the best nickname person of the year, and Oakland Elementary Parsons making that. Tackle. Oakland Elementary Parsons. That's right. You know, Coach, it's funny. I rolled in your class, stopped in your classroom the other day, watched you teach a little bit, and I heard your call. I heard you call him Parsons. I heard you call him Oakland Elementary, uh -huh. and I couldn't help but laugh. It was fantastic. You have, you have to. When, when you got a golden nickname like that, you, you got to go to it. Well, and you know, folks, a lot of the reason that we a lot of the reason that we throw these nicknames out there, we do it because we love to have fun with the kids, and you know, it's just one of those things that we like to do that's very neat and. A lot of times those nicknames stick. They really do. They really they, do. And, you know, they I've take heard people on call Noah Cornbread. Uh huh. I've heard people call, you know, Quave Night Train. Um, you know, and, and quite frankly, those nicknames, that's what I call them all year long. Right. That's just what I do. Yeah, no doubt. You know, you just, when it comes up, you're thinking that nickname. You know, and I do, I will say this, though, and this is, I'm I'm nitpicking. Sure. But we go and we wrestle Clear Fork every year at Clear Fork, the first day of Christmas break, okay? Mm -hmm. And we walk into the gym and it says, Home of the Colts and lady colts, which I believe in horse lore, a colt is specifically a male horse. True story. So a lady it colt. would be a filly, right? Yeah, a lady colt is. A filly. Yeah. So it should be home of the colts and the fillies. I think. I think. Uh, I mean, I am not an equestrian. Me either. So I, I do go to the little brown jug, but that's all the horse racing I know. Well, you know, oh, oh, hold, it's coming back. Coming back, it's coming back. A saving tackle, I think, by Freight Train. Well, and you know, Coach, I should know more about racing than what I do because my grandfather uh, worked for many, many, many years. Actually, my grandfather started working at Houghton Salky, and Houghton Salky, for people who don't know about Houghton Salky, it is under the um, State Street overpass, and for many, many years, they made upholstered racing sulkies and my grandfather worked there from the time he was 14 years old until he had his stroke uh, in his 70s and the only time he didn't work there was when he was doing one thing fighting against the Nazis in Germany oh, wow. so that was the only time wow. he did not so from the time he was 14 years old until he had a stroke in his 70s he worked at Houghton Salk and the only time he didn't work there was when he was over World War II fighting against, you know, the evil powers of the world at the time. Sure, sure. But my grandfather was loved horse racing. He, up, he upholstered racing sulkies, and if there's a person who oh, understand yeah. horse racing, it was my grandfather. But unfortunately, it's one of those things I never really talked to him about. I never really discussed to him about. But if my grandfather were here right now, I'm sure he could tell us some great things about all the years he went to the Brown Jug, all the horse races he went to. You know, just it's just good stuff. And, uh, you know, when people talk about the World War II generation as the greatest generation, they're not lying, folks. Yeah, they are definitely not. I'll tell you, in uh, 2008, I had the chance to, uh, to go over to Europe and uh, spend some time in France. And uh, was able to, to leave Paris for a few days, get up in the north and see uh, Normandy. You and, saw and, Normandy? And Omaha Beach. And I'll tell you what, they, uh, as a, uh, the cemetery there plays the, uh, the Star Spangled Banner and the Marseillaise on the hour, at the hour, the French National Anthem, the American National Anthem. Love the ball and I have no words to express that I, I have never felt what I felt. I can't even describe Absolutely. it. Absolutely. My hair on my arm standing up, but you know, uh, that feeling cannot well explain. And you know, I think sometimes we get lost in translation that there is no greater friend of America than the French. 
You know, the French uh, and the Americans have relied on each other many times throughout history, whether it was the Revolutionary War, whether it was uh, World War One, World War Two, and even a lot of our involvement, people don't realize this, a lot of our involvement in Vietnam actually stems from the French, from French colony, French. sure, sure. You know, so, so there is no greater friend to the American people in the American Republic than, than, our, uh, than our friends over there in France. And coach, that's definitely one of my bucket list things, so I'm a little envious of you. And you know, we're just up here talking, but you know, the neatest thing of all about this all is that everything that this telecom stuff does, and us up here talking, it's all about the kids. It's about these young men. It's about giving them memories, something to look back on. And you know, Sims with a shoestring tackle Sims again the there, I'll tell you what. Sorry to cut you off no, there, coach. Okay. We're just up here waxing poetic as the Rexies have complete and total control of this game. But, you know, hey, listen, right now, here's a great thing right now. Guess what? There's youngsters in the game, coach. Tell you That's what. Right. We, gotta we got a new attention. batch of we nicknames, baby. Nicknames, baby. We got to start saying who these young men are. All right, let's see who makes his next tackle. We're going to give him a great nickname. Okay, somebody. Okay, and. Coach, give me one. Who'd we get there? Uh, look like Ryan at. That's flying Ryan Atkins right there, All right. baby. I was gonna see. I was gonna go Atkins diet there, but but flying Ryan's is good. Oh, Holloway, Christian Holloway, one of the, another one of our wrestlers. I would say Sister Christian, like the uh, Night Ranger yeah, song, yeah, but you know. I don't know if that's a good nickname. We got to think of one there. Uh oh. I think. Tackle by. Tackle made by Zach Davies. The Zach attack. The Zach attack. There we go. The Zach attack. Also, the name. Of Zach Morris's legendary band on Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. All right. Quite frankly, I think that's about the third or fourth time I've dropped that Not, you know? reference in a game. So if you don't watch Saved by the Bell, folks, you won't get it. Oh! Ivy keeps. Ivy does keep. Pushing out of bounds, number 81, Coach. Who we got there? That's Andrew Sturgeon. Sturgeon like a sturgeon. Woo! Just made a tackle. How about that? The fish. The fish. The fish. The fish. You know, some of the some of the best athletes on the face of the earth are named after fish. Mike Trout. Mike Trout. Mike Trout. Mike Trout. <laughs> Coach Trout. <laughs> you got me thinking about guys named after fish. <laughs> I keep thinking of Dan Marino because I think of the Dolphins, but that's not a fish name. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, man. The, the, I was at his, Laces out, Dan. I was at his last career home game, and uh, it was it was sad, man. I was down there. Uh, you actually watched the game in the Orange Bowl, huh? No, it was, uh, it was pro player. Yeah. Okay, pro yeah, player. So, okay. Um, or Joe Robbie, if you will. What Joe you Robbie, play? yeah. But, uh, yeah, through. Through Tara Dyer, who got tickets and uh, and uh, was able to sit with uh, Gloria McDuffie, OJ's mom, and, and uh, got to tailgate the game. And you know, uh, so we go down there to see to see OJ McDuffie play. He's out with turf toe, so uh, you know I'll go with uh, go with Marino, and it's his last home game, and uh, he gets pulled for Damon Heward. So here's this Hall of Famer, you know, most most prolific passer. He gets pulled for, for Damon, Damon Heward. Heward. Yeah. An asterisk, an also thought, an yeah. afterthought in the history of the annals of the NFL. Yeah, so goes in for Dan Marino. How about that? How and, that's about a, that? and that's how it all. Well, it kind of makes you wonder, too, when down. I was in high school and we played Finley, somehow Ben Roethlisberger, for whatever reason, wasn't Finley starting quarterback until his senior year. I actually played against Ben Roethlisberger in high school. He was a tight end coach. No kidding. He was a tight end. It's a good size now, guy. Listen, you know listen, do you know why he wasn't the starting quarterback? Because the coach's son was the starting quarterback. Uh, well, you know, uh, <laughs> Cliff Height, who is now a, I believe, a state senator of some sort. So 
And not like his quarter, not like Cliff Height's son wasn't a good quarterback, but he certainly wasn't Ben Roethlisberger. So I played against Ben Roethlisberger, but he was a tight end. And I'm not a Steelers fan. Oh, the Prexies almost have 12 dudes on the field. 12 guys. I said dudes, didn't I? Well, Coach, we got four minutes and 51 seconds left here. We got a running clock, obviously. Uh, Coach, I'm, I'm kind of pleased with what I see. Listen, this is a Galleon team that has, came in tonight's game 4-1. and one. This is a Galleon team that came in tonight's game averaging 31 points. And this is a Galleon team that really 14 points have been given up against. They haven't done, really haven't done anything offensively. Also, on the other hand, we've had a, we've, we, we haven't turned the ball over. We've created turnovers. And I think we found a running game, Coach. I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to agree with, with everything you said there. Uh, just to, to add, that's, you know, that's the answer you want to see. You, you get, you get punched in the mouth at Pleasant. I again, here we are bringing it up. I hate bringing well, it up, you know, but honestly, you know, you're right. You're right. That, that's the response you want as a coach, as somebody with eyes. That's the response you want. You know, and, and that's all the credit to these, to these guys who. Who went in? You know, uh, started an article about them. You know, cleaning it up at uh, at practice this week, obviously, and and you know, they've done everything we need them to do, and everything they need to do be to be successful today. So, Sims uh, fighting for more yards there, and you're right, coach. Hey, listen, and at quarterback, who's that coming out of the game, coach? Is that number nine? Who is that, coach? It's Joey Hammond. Joey Hammond. Holy smokes. Brother of Roger. And Autumn. And Mary. Had all those Hammond kids. At school. <laughs> Good family. Joey Hammond. I think I heard the uh, student section chanting that they wanted Ivan, too. Oh, man. I'll tell you what. Ivan Granado. He is uh, listed at 5'6. 140 on our on our sheet, and I'm going to tell you I pass him in the hallway every morning, and uh, I think that's pretty generous. Oh, I mean, he's a good, he's a good kid, man. Tell you what, though, we're going to have a heyday if we get Lad the Impaler and Ivan the Terrible in the same broadcast. Oh my goodness! Oh, Could we get Ivan man. the Terrible in this ball? Give game? the people what they want. Give the people what they want. And it is. Mr. Mullins brought up a very good point. It is close to Halloween, folks. We're getting there. I'm telling you, the man's playing chess. The man is playing chess. Colin Hill with a great Another punt. Another fantastic punt. Oh, right there on the tackle, and he just missed. I'll tell you what, he's got a. Oh. Sims giving chase. Oh, and he trips him up. How about that? How about that? So Listen, here folks. you go. You're, you're in a situation. You're up 30 points. There's two minutes left in the game. You're obviously beat, right? The man, for all that intents and purposes, is going to mean nothing. Right, right. And Davion Sims comes out of nowhere to make at least the third effort tackle we've seen tonight. You know, you talked about hustle. You talked about heart. You talked about motor. You can't coach that. You can't. You can't. Coach you can't. Still out there so and I tell you good what, good on him. I see a kid like that doing something, and it just warms my heart. I'll give you for example. I was watching a girls' soccer game a couple weeks ago, and uh, they weren't doing well. They were going to lose. They were down by a couple goals, and with a minute left in the game, Olivia Moodley is still running around like a chicken with her head cut off, and she scores a goal. And I found her the next day at school, and I said, Olivia, that was fantastic. I said. That goal meant nothing, but it means everything because you showed hard and you didn't quit. Because most people in that position, it wouldn't have mattered. She's and a heck of a soccer player, she isn't is, she? And she's a good kid. She's a good kid. And what Simsy did there, what the junkyard did there, it's great. That's great. You can't coach that, coach. And as a coach, you see that. You, you're, you're still coaching. I used to coach, and I see that, and I'm like, holy smokes. That just... That just that makes me want to run through a wall right there. I, I get excited when I see stuff like that. Cheerleaders down there dancing the thriller. I keep wondering if they're gonna start doing that like 
that high legged oh. zombie. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that, that's so far into the dance, though. It's oh, such it an is, elaborate. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I had the Michael Jackson's number one DVD, right? So Ooh. always number one hits. Absolutely, I, yeah. I tried, I think, like late middle school, maybe, to, to teach myself the dance to beat it and thriller. So. Uh, needless to say, I was not successful, but you know. Listen, if you could, if you could have learned the dance of Thriller, you know, <laughs> you would have broken the young ladies' hearts in middle school, Coach Kevlinger. Oh that's goodness. for sure. Oh my goodness! Hawking him down from behind, number. Getting up from the pile, I see number seventy-one, and who is seventy-one, Coach? Seth Giles. Giles! The Giles driver! Giles driver! Giles Not driver. pile driver. That's right. I'm picking it up. The Giles driver. Nice. Seth Giles. All right. 60-some uh, odd ticks left. And the student section is chanting, I believe we will win. Yeah, I believe that's we a, will too. That is uh, one of those chants that got really popular about the last uh, soccer World Cup. And I'll, I'll tell you what, the uh, the U.S. men's national team, they got their back against the wall right now in qualifying. So um, it has not been easy sledding for them. But well, the reason I bring it up, they have the coolest soccer kits that they released in the event that uh, the men's national team does qualify uh, for a trip to Russia next summer. So, oh, so the games are in Russia. Yeah, next World Cup's oh, in Russia. I bet those won't be crooked or fixed. Well. I mean, for God's sakes. Wow. Well, the Russians seem to be fixing a lot of things here lately or meddling in a lot of things. Wow. Well, no comment, right? Wow. Well, well. Well, okay. So, 21 points. A couple of them uh, late touchdowns that really don't mean much, but the Prex has put up 44 points and. Uh, we got a 56-some ticks here, which will surely wind off the clock as soon as the clock has started here and after the kickoff happens. But, you know, the Prexies, the Prexies bounce back in fashion. After six games, we're looking at a 4-2 record, Coach, with, uh, with, a, with some good chances coming up to do some great things by these young men. This is the first truly complete, clean, mistake-free game I've watched the Prexies play all year. And once again, Coach, or once again, Coach and folks, you watch this game and you go, wow, Prexies, Prexies destroyed it. The Prexies just are about to be a 4-1 and one team to make them 4-2. and two. The team that was averaging 31 points a game, they put up 44 on them. Let's talk about the fact it's a 7-7 seven, seven game at the end of the first quarter. It was very, you are right. It's a 7-7 seven, seven game, you're right. So at the end of the first quarter, we, you know, dominated this game. Well, we kind of laughed at the end of the first quarter. We said, my God. The here we are again. Sure, game, sure. Here we are tied. Funny how that happens. I, I got to wonder if Galleon's going to pull an onside kick here. I mean, it seems kind of silly to do so, but then again, there's still some game left, so. Smart play by, who is that? Would that be number... The, the fish. The fish. Sturge. You know what? Listen, man, Sturge is a senior. and uh, Oh, A.J. Pollock. He's named after a fish and a really good baseball player. I just Pollock. thought of that one, too. There you go. Listen, that mind never quits working, does it, Coach? No, I, I was really upset so that I only that, came up that, with there's one. There's something else on that head besides beautiful hair. There's also a mind in there, huh? There I go, talking about hair again. It, it depends who you're asking. I think we need to do a poll at the school. Who on the football team has better hair? Julian, uh, Lodi and Paler, or Cornbread? Turnover by the Prexies. The ball squirts out. So I spoke too soon. Well, yeah, this we is turned the ball over. Kind of situation where you wanted to uh, turn into a two possession game or anything no, here, right quick. No, where, you don't. Uh, you know, crazy time happens, if you will. Anything, listen, when there's ticks on the clock, anything can happen. Well, and you know, listen, we've got a lot of youngsters in this game. So they've got a lot of experience. 
So, you know, it's important to remember that right now we got great young kids out there getting reps who are going to be our future Friday night players next year. Great tackle there by number 71. Is that the Giles That's driver? That's the Giles again? driver. The yes, Giles it is. driver. Wow, there you go. Clock is ticking. There's 20 some odd ticks left. I think Gallion may try to get one more playoff here. Well, Ivy was not poisoned tonight, coach. We hit him with some Roundup and killed those weeds, didn't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we did. Definite great showing from the defense here. And just like that, the clock hits four zeros. The game is over. Your Mary Harding High School Prexies come back after a rough mistake thrown game last week and come out tonight and make a statement against the four and one Galleon Tigers. We put up 44 points. We moved to four and two on the season. And uh, coach, I was impressed with a lot of things tonight, but most importantly, I was impressed with our running game. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Julian had a game changer there. Somebody uh, who, you know, we mentioned, I believe, a, l a little bit in the pregame, but, you know, I don't think, uh, I don't think I expected that. So. Good on the young man. Well, and you know, the running game opens up the passing game as Noah Thompson had a fantastic game passing the ball. Folks, we'll be back here next week for the homecoming game with the Prexies versus the Wildcats of North Union. Until then, be safe, folks, and good night, everybody. Go Prexies.